What's up guys, Zaki here and in this video I'm going to be showing you my 3 best camera placement tips on how you can get the best views for your architectural renders. Let's get it. Now the first tip I'm going to share with you is to always make use of two point perspectives. Now two point perspective is basically when you have two vanishing points in an image and the one point perspective is basically when you have only one vanishing point. Now I have this image here or simply no simply my model here if you guys can recognize this, this is my Kool-Aid render if you want to see about more about this render you simply go to my Instagram page and check it out but this is the model this is actually this is the baby of the render actually so basically what attracted people to this vase was the symmetry in the image how the image balance with everything from the colors to the the symmetry basically and as you can see this is my safe frame i have this line right here and it's in line it's parallel to the frame actually there's a bit of depth here but that didn't actually matter and everything is just symmetrical and straight and smooth now that is because i made use of two point perspective now if you want to know about two point perspective in sketchup it's actually useful in the camera tool you basically go up to these two bars right here and you have camera and you simply click it and then you have previous next a lot of basic stuff and then you have these three the parallel the perspective and the two point for those who don't know what the parallel projection is parallel projection is basically the same view that you have in architectural software such as revit basically that you know raw sharp diagonal view that you basically have in older versions of revit and then the perspective is sketchup's basic view so if we change this to parallel, guess what we have? Yeah, it basically looks like a Revit model, actually. And then we change it back to perspective. This is SketchUp's default one point perspective. As you can see, the table has a vanishing point to it and everything. But when changing it to two point perspective, and I'm going back to my scene. Now look, my scene is originally two points, and you can see how everything looks symmetrical and good and sweet. But when I watch what happens when I change this to one point or to perspective boom you can see it's somehow deformed and everything this went a bit towards this side and that will not actually look cool if you actually hit render i'm not going to hit render on this because i prefer how it originally looked with this house magic and everything and that's basically it with using two point perspective even no matter how you change the camera once you just hit that two point perspective you know that everything is going to be straight and symmetrical and the basic utilization and benefits of this is that this adds to your render because most architectural photographs are taken on tripods or majorly handheld but with a straight and smooth holding of the camera by a professional photographer so what this actually simulates is the tripod feeling or tripod view and the straight and firm hold of the camera so like this view now with this if i change this to perspective not that much changed and it's actually not pretty bad but depending on what scene you're going for especially when you're going for like straight up looking good kind of scenes you simply hit two points because hitting perspective kind of deforms everything but perspectives actually help in terms of when you want to get like really weird and in-depth human feel to images but at the same time two points is actually better because you know I mean you can judge let me know in the comments which view you actually prefer this is the perspective and this is the two-point perspective i personally love two-point perspective because of how realistic and how firm and tripody it looks and it's more of a photograph to me number two tip use realistic eye or visual heights now this is a very very important one to the fact that it actually boosts your render realism factor by hundreds and tons because using realistic eye heights actually simulates a human being looking at the object you have rendered or you want to render actually now in this basic vase this is my niger living room if you want to check the rendered image out head over to my ig you see there um i wanted to focus more on the furniture and the shoe and the flag and the artwork and everything with the electric light points and plants also everything in one view and also i wanted to hide out the source of light i also wanted to cut it to show and in this i had to make use of uh i'd simulate a kneeling down look by that i mean normally you know in the previous tip using normal eye height we used one seven which was the normal standard architectural man height for the vase 
but in this we used I used 939mm which is like the height of a basic chair or something like that and it's basically also simulating someone kneeling down or a really low tripod stand simulating or focusing on very very important factors in this so basically I would have used like 17 or so I would have just simply typed in 17 but boom this is what I actually got and if I wanted to get everything I have to scale out of the image which will actually kill kill and horrifically kill my composition because basically my scene was basically empty i was in a serious vibe when i made this you know in terms of my country and everything so i wanted to actually simulate that view in terms of the furniture and lifestyle and everything so i get all comments saying like my renders are conceptual and everything thank you guys for that too and i try to make sure my best is my best actually so i appreciate that and if you notice when we move this eye height to one seven our image became distorted and we lost our two point perspective facility that's because it's now set to perspective so it's need to go to camera set it back to two points now you can see everything is all straightened out and if i zoom out now you know you see it's not that nasty but it's not what actually what we want now this simulating somebody looking down on the couch and actually i didn't want that so it's all your choice again it's all your choice so i simply love this simulating knee heights and then everything you know even simply moving over to this corner here and then simply hitting my two points again boom and i'm at eye height also sorry knee height yeah knee height too you can take this up to eye height but to look a bit funny so take this up camera two points that's the formula take it up camera two points if you want to get everything simply zoom out adjust this and then bam. but now the image looks a bit distorted and everything i'm going to show you how to fix this in the next tip now for my third tip that is use realistic field of views or fov for short now so basically in this i had two beds artwork lights and in a really really small space actually i wanted to test how i could really use space in this now and creating this vase in order to put everything into one box actually into one safe frame i had to make use of a really really realistic field of view now fov as the name implies is basically the range or the vision or degree or angle at which your eye basically sees something in front of it it's basically how you see in most cinematic these things they calculate it in a way that your eye basically in relation to your position you're able to see what is actually in front of you in full detail without having to turn your head you know move up and down and everything so in terms of a render you're really rigid in this instead of having that neck movement as you do in real life so having this is actually really cool now in order to change this setting you have to make sure that you're working in two point perspective and you need to set a uh, scene so simply go to view animation add scene that's how i got my three scenes here and i'm simply going to my front now this is my first scene as you can see my eye height is 1964 the really, really tall dude or something uh basically actually doesn't actually relate to this because everything was actually scaled somehow improperly in a way so uh -huh. but in a way this is this simulates like uh you kneeling away from the two beds actually so now this field of view if you hit the zoom up here you have this field of view which is 50 degrees now this is my field of view which was 50 degrees and what you actually get in default is something like this let me simply go out of frame here and then i'll simply move back into my scene yeah and i try to adjust myself or no let me just make use of this dude now i try to put myself viewing from here but that will actually be very difficult with the orbit too so i'm going to use this position camera going to put the man and then this is a very sweet tip with this after clicking don't let go of your mouse or your mouse pad you click and then you drag as you can see it's showing the axis at which the guy is looking at so i click here and he's looking towards click yeah snap all right looking towards the beds and then 
boom you get this so it's a bit elevates and then you can see somehow i'm back to my original scene but my field of view is already set let me set you to what's actually what i actually got at the beginning of this i got a field of view of 70 and now you can see it looks a bit distorted it looks everything is just cramped up and it's yeah this is actually what you get in most cameras but in order for wanting to get what i wanted to get which was just these i didn't want to get the ceiling or anything you know sketch up models i mean the view you're looking at is actually the sweetest part but the whole model is pretty destroyed just like what i have here and then even if i zoom in you can see the bed it looks it looks really long like <clears throat> it's as long as a piano or something so simply set my field of view back to between 50 to 55 is actually really realistic so 50 to 50 let me choose 53 and then i zoom out and then yeah the bed shorten the bit maybe take this up a bit and then yeah okay now this is actually a really good view i mean someone kneeling just at the foot of the beds and everything so basically field of view notice the range 50 to 55 perfect render if you want to go like whole scale you know get all those uh, skyscraper visualizations that have all these sharp edges i mean those are really cool and everything for exterior and everything but if you want to get like cool really immersed realistic interior visualizations how to keep it 50 to 55 max you can go up to 60 let's do that right now and then yeah you can go up to 60 you know to just get that perfect view you have the last tip i have for you guys today is to focus on the sweet spots now this actually helps in visualizations where you have a lot of things going on for example i have this interior render actually I actually put a lot in this so i have this wall here i have this light a lot of things out of scene i didn't actually render this part I just wanted to focus on this now this actual view as you're seeing here is my sweet spot but again with a lot of things going on from this cabinet to this table to these phones to this to the mat to this to the plants you can actually focus on really intricate details like for example in this view don't forget always two point perspective because you change perspective you can see a bit distorted so if you go back to my scene and then if you want to focus on maybe sweet spot here is actually your choice and then i can just simply now you see i'm rolling into the mouse and pretty sure my eye height is changing a bit so simply going to click this walk tool i'm going to walk towards this part you can see that actually really smooth and then with this my look around i'm going to look down onto the table and then maybe get a bit closer and then look down and then yeah maybe zoom in a bit yep let's serve and then yeah i really got this i could have rendered this actually to emphasize the marble table the yeah it's pretty iphones yeah put iphones in this really cool and then this decoration here or i could have simply gone back chosen another thing maybe this light bulb for example now just simply put my head up you can see a bit distorted now but i simply go back to two point perspective and then i zoom in uh with this i zoom in with this and then use my pan to go up still two point perspective by the way and then zoom in yeah you can see now i'm actually getting the photo and the uh, light bulbs right here so that's really cool you can actually pick a lot from a scene actually probably scenes that are really busy so that's how to actually focus on sweet spots and that'll be the last tip for today okay that'll be all for this tutorial thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to connect with me on my social media to ask on any other further questions any questions left and answered on this particular tutorial i mean there was a lot covered here it'll be a lot for you guys to ask and i'm really 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 open to answer a lot of questions do hit subscribe if you're new to this subscribe to get more of this kind of content and also watch my previous video in the box at the right side and i'll see you guys in the next one